Western is tracking slowdowns through the region this morning, including the aftermath of this crash on I-5. The system doesn't work. That's the message from Burian's police chief talking about efforts to stop gangs there. What he is proposing instead coming up. Also, still to come, we'll hear what President Trump has to say to the U.N. in just about 15 minutes here. This is Q13 News This Morning. All right, good to have you. Uh, just about 7 o'clock now. I'm Bill Wixey. I'm Liz DeWicky, and MJ's tracking our forecast here. And uh, we've still got that harvest moon out it's there, MJ. Great looking. It's just gorgeous out there looking over West Seattle from CenturyLink. And it's uh, been reflecting nicely into Elliott Bay. Yeah, we're at sunrise, but we can still see that moon. It's 51 in Seattle right now, which is one degree warmer than our normal low. We'll be topping out a little above normal today. Normal is 68. How about 70 for Seattle and Tacoma? 66 in Everett, 69 Bremerton, 65 in Bellingham with pure sunshine a gorgeous fall day please get out and enjoy this week it is such a rare opportunity to have weather like this probably the best weather in the world honestly you need a jacket this morning sunglasses this afternoon and your sunset is 7 p.m like we just had our sunrise at 7 a.m all right tracking the coming weather for you i think you're gonna like it right now adam it's not been such a great morning out yeah, there yeah no we've had a lot of issues to be uh, wrestling with this morning this is one of them now southbound i-5 as you've gotten around the michigan curve it was a two-car collision by the looks of this, and one of the vehicles turned into a fully engulfed vehicle. So we've had at least two lanes blocked by this state patrol on the scene. Seattle fire here. Investigation continues around this mess. But trying to get to the airport, South I-5, not maybe your best option. In fact, starting to think about 99 or 509 on the back side of things might work out better. We've also seen through Tacoma, northbound I-5 steadiness from 16 towards the dome and city center. 512 heavier in through Puyallup. Also just caught wind of a new possible collision for drivers on northbound I-5 right as you get in towards South Center. This may be causing us new grief as well. We do see the slowing traffic heavy in, heavy in through Federal Way and reaching right in towards the South Center Hill. Liz and Bill, back over to you. New this morning here, a man is dead after his car hit a train, and police say it happened near 88th Street Northeast and State Avenue early this morning. This is unusual, though, because it didn't happen near an intersection. They say the car left the road and struck the side of the train before it was dragged about a mile north to 104th Street Northeast. Police not releasing the name of the driver until the next of kin can be notified. They're still investigating exactly what caused this accident. Um, and also, we don't know uh, why the driver's car went off the road either. So we'll keep you posted on that. Meanwhile, this morning, gang violence in Burien is a growing problem. Just last week, a woman was killed by a stray bullet while sitting at her desk at work. Uh, the intended target was actually another gang member. And last night, this tragic incident, just part of a long discussion at the city council meeting. John Hopperstad joining us with more on what's being done to tackle the gang issue in that region and a lot of frustration there as well, John. There really is. The mayor and the police chief pointing to a system that they say is failing to keep gang members and their guns off the streets, also creating a more dangerous situation for people in that community. Now, investigators blame teens linked to a well-known gang for the death of Gabriela Reyes Dominguez third person just arrested in this case as well. But Burien's police chief says the gang problem is not going away because of a system in which young people are released over and over again despite multiple firearm charges. Unfortunately, when someone picks up a gun, we need to look at the safety of our entire community and hold that individual accountable. As this community, we have to stand up and say enough. A system where juveniles are released from custody over and over again despite multiple firearms charges is not in the best interest of community safety. He also talked about a traffic stop just two nights ago. He said the car was stopped with known gang members in it. A 15-year-old was inside that car intoxicated, also convicted for previous firearms possession. They found several guns in the car that night. They tried to book him. But that was denied, so they were left with no choice but to take him home and release him. Say so That's one of the problems they continue to deal with. Now, the city council last night also directed the city manager to come back with recommendations and options on how to strengthen public safety, including possibly adding additional patrols and sharing intelligence with other communities in the area. King County Sheriff already trying to create a regional gang unit in the wake of this uh, killing. And King County had a regional gang task force in two, two, until 2014, but that was cut due to a lack of funding. Guys? Some people in Burien wondering if these strategies will actually help reduce violence in their neighborhoods. Yeah, residents say they've seen an increase in gang activity over the years. King County had a regional gang task force until 2014. It was eliminated because of budget cuts. Friends of recent drive-by victim uh, uh, believe that uh, their community has become a target for gang recruitment. 
gangs has been always all the time, but it's, it's worse. I mean, we can see it. So uh, investigators uh, arrested a third juvenile connected to Gabrielle Reyes Dominguez's death yesterday. New this morning, firefighters trying to figure out what caused an apartment to catch fire overnight. Late last night, Renton firefighters called to an apartment complex near Southeast 176th and 151st. That's in the Fairwood neighborhood. Crews say one apartment was on fire. That was quickly knocked down, but that fire did spread into an attic. A second alarm was called out for more resources. No injuries reported. At least six people, though, are displaced. Students at an alternative high school in Seattle are walking out of class today. They're protesting the school district's plan to move some teachers to other schools. Students announced the walkout at Nova High School yesterday. Seattle Public Schools says enrollment projections for this year were short by more than 700 students, meaning nearly three dozen teachers will be moved to other schools or assigned to subs. Seattle Council Member Shama Sawant says she will join those students today. It is such an inspiration. And it makes me so happy to be next to young people who are leading this struggle. All of them, Jack, Aiden, Casey, Mirabai, I mean, they are showing what it takes to win real social change. So students are planning to walk out starting at noon this afternoon from Nova High School in the Central District to City Hall downtown. Santa Mayor Jenny Durkin just unveiled a $5.9 billion budget proposal for the city. This is Durkin's first budget proposal since taking office. The mayor says the budget focuses on what she calls basics, public safety, homelessness, housing developments, building a more equitable and inclusive city, investing in the future, and strengthening transit and transportation systems. Now, here's a breakdown of where some of that money would go. So first off, close to $90 million would go to tackling the homeless uh, issue. The mayor says the city's navigation team would increase from 22 to 30 people by next year. And the budget calls for providing 2,300 emergency shelter beds. $695 million would also go toward public safety. That would include 120 new firefighting recruits and 20 new police officers. Durkin's budget proposal as well, including $609 million toward transit and transportation investments. We are facing seen a new era of very difficult traffic. It's coming. It's going to be worse than bad. And we need to be as ready as possible. So Mayor Durkin's budget also includes more than a million dollars for safe injection sites. Now, those sites would provide uh, drug users a safe place to use drugs, where trained staff would be on hand to help treat an overdose if needed. The city council, though, now needs to review and possibly amend this proposal. Seattle city leaders have voted to authorize a $700 million renovation of Key Arena. So that means we are one step closer to getting an NHL team here in Seattle. So now the city and local investors will present the NHL's executive committee, a formal proposal on October 2nd, and then the full NHL Board of Governors will vote in December on whether to approve an expansion franchise for Seattle for the 2020 season. And this vote caps a year-long process that included a struggle over a competing arena proposal with Soto and the demolition of Key Arena could begin this year. Won't be long now. All right, 707 here. MJ's following our forecast, and it's a really beautiful day out. I think it's the most beautiful weather in the world. In the world. In the world. Bold I feel statement. like that happens it doesn't a lot here. get much yeah. more fantastic than this. Sunny skies and highs around 70? Can't Come on, yeah. France. This is <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Bring it, France. Yeah. <laughs> what do you got? Yeah, we have, you know, the rest of the country's got some rain and stuff. We got this beautiful weather. 51 in Seattle, still last chance to see that harvest moon as it's sinking down behind the Olympics in a clear sky over Elliott Bay. Gorgeous. We do have fog reporting in Bellingham. Now Joint Base with McCord and Shelton reporting fog. But sunny everywhere else already. Port Angeles, a little bit of cloud cover. Gorgeous day shaping up. Chilly in spots. There's 36 in Shelton with that fog. And Joint Base with McCord with that fog, 38. So, yeah, decent jacket as you step out. 43 in Bellingham. Bellingham with that fog and let's see 42 in Forks. Olympia's at 40. Could drop down into the 30s before we start to warm up so nicely today. Sunny skies, 68 for Paulsbo, Bainbridge Island and Kingston, 69 in Bremerton and 70 for Seattle Burien. Bellevue and Sammamish, what a great day for a hike or just go for a plain old walk. 70 for Tacoma, Lakewood, Puyallup, 71, Olympia and Lacey. 73 in Centralia with sunny skies. Not really seeing the fog in the south down there on the Nisqually Valley like we usually do on mornings like this. 65 in Bellingham,
Birmingham today with gorgeous sunshine in Whatcom, Skagit County, where Mount Vernon's hitting 65, 66 in Everett, Snohomish County, a gorgeous day. And through the strait, look at that, 65 for Port Angeles. Coastal folks, you're already seeing clear skies, no fog, and check this out, 75 for Long Beach and Astoria today and 70 in Aberdeen and Hoquiam. Over the Cascades, sunny, that freezing level over 12,000 feet. And on the other side, mid-70s, Wenatchee and Ellensburg with pure sunshine. And the fires there, there's three left and they're almost completely contained, which is great news. Keeping the sun around through Friday with highs warming up to the mid-70s by Friday for Seattle. Saturday, some clouds roll in, 71, still perfect for the Sounders and the Huskies playing home games. And then Sunday and Monday, slight chance of showers with highs at the mid-60s. Really perfect weather. Speaking of perfect, look at this shot. Kathy and Anna Cordes got a picture of the rainbow landing on the ferry. So clearly there is a pot of gold on that ferry. Thank you for that. I'd ask for more nature photos, but I need Halloween pictures. Your kids in costumes. Go to our website, q13fox.com, and at the banner you'll see this morning, and you'll find out where to submit pictures that I'll show next month. Here's Adam with our crazy commute. Right. This morning certainly has been one of those active mornings where we've seen uh, a car fire and collision southbound I-5 as drivers make their way right past the Michigan curve. This takes up the two right lanes. This has certainly been an issue, but looks like crews are starting to sweep things up and get this moved over to the shoulder if, if they can at this point. That is one issue we're wrestling with. South 5 out of town. Getting to the airport, I advise using 99 or 509. Uh, also watching what's happening for drivers. Northbound I-5 moving in towards the South Center Hill and 200th where a collision's in the left lane. Uh, you'll find uh, 512 still heavier in through Puyallup. Tacoma still wrestling getting in past city center. There's that slowing on the Valley Freeway getting up towards 200. Well, uh, 405, Renton Curves. This is still just kind of crowded into the curves into Kennedale. And Newcastle, 520, I-90. Makes some sense. South 5, South 405, we still tangle right around the Kings, Nohomish County line, and US 2 across the trestle feeds a little heavier in towards Everett and I-5 at this hour yet. State ferries this morning have been on time for the most part, but the Port Townsend Coopville does continue to be on one boat service. Sounder Rail checks in on time in both directions. Liz and Bill, back over to you. President Trump is just about to speak to the UN General Assembly. We'll take you there live coming up. Plus, we will show you a proposal designed to help save southern resident orcas and how you can weigh in on it. Volkswagen. Hurry in and get a value-packed 2019 Jetta Ash for just $169 a month, now with the People First Warranty. Like other small business owners, I've taken a close look at I-1631. It's a complicated, poorly written proposal that's filled with unfair exemptions that make no sense. It's supposed to reduce pollution, but it exempts many of the state's largest polluters. Big corporations get a free ride, while Washington families, consumers, and small businesses are left to pay billions under 1631. Please look into the facts and vote no. Thank you. Don't miss the grand opening of the new Floor and Decor in Everett. If you have never been to a Floor and Decor, you have to go to the grand opening. Hardwoods, laminates, tile, or stone. Holy smokes, this place is huge. I'm on a budget and I was able to go to Floor and Decor and save a lot of money. You will be blown away by this experience. The pros come here, I come here. If you love your wallet and you love your home, you have to go. Floor and Decor, now open in Everett at Everett Mall. Also open in Tukwila. So, Greg, it's a lot to take in. And I know that's hard to hear, but the doctors caught it early. Hi, Blake. My dad has cancer. And I know how hard that is to hear. But you're in the right place. And Dr. Pascal and her team, they know what to do. They know what to do. The doctors know what to do. So here's the plan. First off, we're going to give you all the support. Hi. Hi. You're picking up your SUV, right? Yes. Cool. Well, we not only fixed the dents, but we added a few things. Built-in 4G LTE Wi-Fi, Apple CarPlay compatibility, rear seat reminder, teen driver technology, and a 7-inch diagonal touchscreen. We also painted it. Whoa. This isn't our car. It's a Chevy. You're right. This is the Chevy Equinox. All those features come standard. It's pretty much everything. Mine's not. What more could you want? Get almost $4,500 below MSRP on this 2018 Equinox LT when you finance with GM Financial. Find new roads at your local Chevy dealer. You've probably seen the ads attacking my character. 
Well, that's what politicians do. They lie about my career because they don't want to talk about their records. Fact is, I've been a pediatrician in this community for 17 years, and I have never turned away a patient. I know what's wrong with healthcare because I see it up close. I'll take on the drug companies, and I won't let insurance companies jack up prices for people with pre-existing conditions. I'm Dr. Kim Schreier, and I approve this message because you deserve the truth. All right, welcome back. 714 right now. This uh, car fire has been put out on I-5 heading southbound uh, from the airport through downtown Seattle. And boy, it's been a real mess. So, so traffic stacked up as you head uh, downtown on I-5 uh, heading southbound this morning. So the uh, governor's task force has released a, a draft report talking about ways to save the southern resident orcas from going extinct. That task force has been working on this for six months, and in that time, three more whales have died, which means we are now down to just 74 southern resident orcas. The task force identified more than 50 ways to help protect the orcas, and some of those include boosting salmon habitat, getting more funding for salmon hatcheries so that the orcas have enough to eat, also proposing some new rules about how boats have to operate around whales, including whale-watching boats, and making sure the water stays clean of contamination from chemicals like PCBs and stormwater runoff from streets and sidewalks. You, you have a little less than two weeks to weigh in on this plan, and we've set up a link on our website where you can comment on the proposals. You can read the whole thing. You can tell the task force which actions you like and you don't like. You can head to Q13Fox.com and search ORCAs. President Donald Trump has just arrived at the United Nations this morning. He is speaking to reporters right now, expecting to uh, speak to the General Assembly in just a few moments, and we will listen to the president speak live when that begins, and we'll bring you highlights a bit later. We're also going to be streaming that entire speech on our website, Q13Fox.com. The president taking a couple of questions here. Let's listen in. And we want to see it fixed. What's happening there is a human tragedy, okay? So the uh, president heading into the U.N. as we speak, and uh, we'll be monitoring what happens there as he addresses the General Assembly. Also, uh, New Zealand making some history at the U.N. yesterday with a baby in attendance. New Zealand's prime minister just gave birth. She brought the baby to the General Assembly. This is Jacinda Ardern, and she was there to make a speech at the Nelson Mandela Peace Summit. And the baby uh, even got her own picture ID there, marked New Zealand first baby. How about that? Now that's, that's something for the scrapbook, don't you think? That's pretty cool. All right, let's check in with MJ right now, and uh, what a great start out there. I know, it's so beautiful, 51 in Seattle. We had a little cloud on the horizon, maybe some te teensy bit of fog over there on the other side of Lake Union, but for the most part, it's a clear sky going on everywhere. Little bits of fog, actually, Whidbey Island reporting some fog in Arlington, 39 with bits of fog, Shelton, 37 with some fog. Otherwise, we're pretty clear. Wait, Joint Base West Court is only 38 with a little bit of fog. Everybody else, clear skies, and we will eventually get clear skies, even if you've got that fog. 65 by lunchtime and 70 for that perfect afternoon high Seattle. And if it's just a little too chilly for you, stick around. 71 tomorrow, 73 on Thursday with sunny skies and 75 on Friday. And then the weekend, not bad. We got some clouds rolling in on Saturday, dropping us down to 71. And Sunday and Monday, slight chance of showers with highs in the mid-60s. Okay, Adam, we've had a car fire. We've had a train thing. What's going on now? Yeah, I've been watching what's been happening still here on uh, southbound I-5, leaving Seattle. This the scene of uh, what was a collision and car fire. Looks like a flatbed tow truck is here to hopefully get things uh, somewhat picked up and hauled out sooner than later. But trying to get to the airport, this is going to add an extra dent in your commute trying to get out of downtown Seattle. I would advise using uh, 99 if you can make that happen because South 5 is going to take you that extra 10, 15, almost 20 minutes to get around this mess. Meanwhile, northbound I-5 has been a little bit choppy, culturing towards the South Center Hill and 220th because of a collision that's been in the left lane. Tacoma. Tests our patients. North 5 right around the 16 curve. 512 still moves heavy out of Puyallup. There's that slowing on northbound I-5 just north of 516 for that collision. Uh, also seeing 405 tougher on the Renton curves. We've seen I-90 stacking up more and more across Mercer Island. The floating bridge deck's still handling okay. And South 5 and South 405 uh, knocking it down a little bit uh, as you make your way across the Kings and Homish County line. That's still going to be a wrinkle yet. Guys, back over to you. So September is National Preparedness Month. Coming up, we're going to talk about how you need to really prepare your bank account for a natural disaster. Probably haven't thought about that, have you? Pharmaceutical companies have too much power 
and drugs cost way too much. That's why I want to allow states to negotiate drug prices to help keep costs down. I passed a law so lots of working families could buy basic health and drug coverage for about $35 a month. Other states are adopting my plan. I hope Washington will too. I'm Maria Cantwell, and I approve this message because these are real solutions. Jenny has a life, a big life. I got a lot going on. She hates to feel hassled, loves progress. Make my life better, I am your BFF. Jenny, may we propose the hassle-free account? Listening. No more monthly service charges, minimum balance fees, or overdraft fees. <laughs> that sounds too good to be true. Not when you use the red key. Maybe you're with the wrong bank. Maybe. Consider this. Open a hassle-free account, and we'll give you $100 when you set up direct deposit. Awesome. Only at KeyBank. Think you missed out on Honda clearance deals? Well, you haven't. Clearance savings on new Hondas have been extended. New CRVs, the 2018 Motor Trend SUV of the year, now just $269 a month. 40 passenger pilots with low 0.9% financing. Packed with technology for over two grand less than Toyota Highlander. No wonder Honda is the 2018 U.S. News Best SUV brand. Honda clearance savings continue, but only for a limited time. See your Western Washington Honda dealer today. Luis waited his whole life to celebrate his team being crowned champions. So our wellness coaches developed a plan to keep him fit and healthy. And when his moment finally arrived, his knees were up to the jaw. Edna, you don't join us, we join you. Star 101.5, today's best mix. Whatever it takes. I'm in love with the shape of you. And throwbacks. Star 101.5 is giving you free gas and $5,000 free cash. Listen every weekday at 7 a.m. He seemed too good to be true, so I looked him up. Turns out, Dino Rossi not only voted against struggling families, but he tried to profit from their misery, too. As a real estate investor, Rossi taught a seminar on how to profit when people lost their homes during the foreclosure crisis. And Rossi kept working with a shady investor even as he was indicted for fraud. Take a look for yourself. Dino Rossi is not for us. DCCC is responsible for the content of this ad. Q13 Weather is brought to you by Les Schwab Tires. Fall tire sale is one of our biggest sales of the year. Head our way before the weather does and we'll make sure you're good to go. Les Schwab Tires, doing the right thing matters. Wow, that's a really interesting shot, isn't it? Look at that, Seattle just kind of blanketed in a, in a cottony wisp of clouds. Something like that. All right, 722 right now. September is National Preparedness Month, and all month long we are preparing ourselves and helping you prepare for disasters that could strike our region. And this week, Katie, talking about the importance of saving for an emergency, and this is something that a lot of us probably don't think about. Yeah, you know, it sounds a little obvious, right? But do we actually save up for an event in the case of a disaster or maybe a huge national emergency? We save up for rainy days, for a new car, for a new home, maybe even college tuition. But FEMA says it is just as, po as important to be financially prepared for a disaster, and it's important to financially be prepared in two different ways. One, for in the event of an emergency, and two, for after an emergency, creating a financial plan to rebuild your lives. So let's start with the finances of being prepared during an event. When you go down a checklist, you talk about a lot of different items here, and really, it can all add up. So to make it reasonable, King County Emergency Management says you got to start small. So some of the items that you start with are water, maybe an emergency first aid kit or possibly a survival kit. I like to do a small knife or maybe a, uh, a compass where you can buy some of these pre-made in these custom kits. Some of these on Amazon uh, available for only about 15 to $20. So you can really customize what you need, including like different things, an emergency blanket. And then obviously you want non-perishable food items as well. Water being the big key. So all of this stuff though can really add up. 
So what King County Emergency Management says is you got to just start small. You don't have to buy all of this at once. The key is to just start the kit, maybe buy one, two items, and then slowly add to it. That's part of being prepared during an event. But what about financially preparing yourself for after a disaster? Experts with Vanguard Investments say you really need enough money to cover three to six months worth of expenses. That's because many times major disasters can take months to recover from and a steady income that you might have been relying on might not be available. Maybe you can't even physically work. So if this sounds daunting, the key is to just start. Any emergency fund is better than nothing. For instance, if you can save just $25 a week, for two years, you could have $2,600 saved. But keep this in mind, every family has a different set of circumstances. Part of knowing how much you need saved comes down to how many people are living in your household. And also knowing specific critical expenses like housing, food, and personal expenses. So what are the bills you, you have to be paying for come down the road? Here's something else to remember. In the event of a disaster, you are still responsible for paying for things like a mortgage whether or not your home might be livable. Same thing with credit cards. But if a disaster happens and you can't pay your bills, at the very least, call your credit card companies. Sometimes lenders will work with you to create a plan for getting back on track. Bill, I'll send it back over to you. All right, Katie, good stuff. Hey, still ahead this morning, Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh says he's not backing down. I know I never did that. If I had done that, it would have been the talk of campus. So his response to sexual assault accusations ahead of a planned hearing. That's coming up. Also, I'm Brandi Cruz. As the Kavanaugh controversy continues, a state lawmaker here says he will resign over multiple accusations of inappropriate contact with former students when he worked as a high school teacher and college professor. But there's a catch. He says his resignation won't happen until after the November election. We discuss after the break. Well, and if you're getting ready for school right now, it's kind of chilly out right now. It's 51 in Seattle, but some folks are in the 30s. So bundle up in that jacket that this afternoon, gorgeous, sunny and 70. Love it. Lunch in the Seattle School District. Pancakes with sausage, sausage and hash browns or the bagel lunchable. In Kent, toasted cheese sandwich or hamburger and fries. And Everett, the Olay chicken taco. And in Tacoma, mandarin orange chicken with rice and steamed vegetables. Have a great day at school. See you after the break. When Kim Schreier says, I will lead the fight to keep them out. What she isn't saying is the real people that are kept out are the ones most in need. Millionaire Kim Schreier's practice denied health care to poor kids on Medicaid while she got rich. Medicaid patients need us to open doors, not close them. We need to keep Kim Schreier out of Congress. NRCC is responsible for the content of this advertising. Nissan's latest tech surrounds you with peace of mind. The 2018 Nissan Rogue Sport. Featuring rear cross-traffic alert, blind spot warning, and automatic emergency braking that can stop for you. Now standard on the Nissan Rogue family. Save up to $47.50 on the 2018 Rogue or save $22.50 on the 2018 Rogue Sport. Now the most exciting tech you own is in your driveway. When you've been hurt in a serious accident, you need a serious attorney. An attorney who's handled the big cases and knows how to bring a big insurance company down to size. An attorney like Kirk Bernard. For 30 years, Kirk has helped victims of catastrophic accidents recover millions of dollars. He'd like to help you recover too. Call Kirk now for a free case review. Hurt in a serious accident? Call a serious law firm. Bernard Law Group, 800-690-1000. motorcycle great rates for great rides when I wrote the bill to put ignition locks in the cars of chronic DUI offenders it became law because both sides work together when I wrote another bill to put child molesters away for life that became law too because both sides work together I never cared who got the credit 
It just needed to get done. I'm Dino Rossi. I approve this message because you can accomplish a lot when you don't care who gets the credit. It's here! Here comes the man. Step up to GMC with nearly 11,200 total value on this specially equipped GMC Sierra SLT when you finance through GM Financial. This half hour, we will hear from Judge Brett Kavanaugh speaking publicly for the first time about accusations which could derail his Supreme Court chances. A Washington lawmaker says he is not planning to serve another term in office after accusations of sexual misconduct, but he's also not dropping out of the race. And we'll hear what uh, Seahawks head coach Pete Carroll has to say about the controversy surrounding Earl Thomas and all the practices that he skipped this year. This is Q13 News This Morning. All right, just about 7.30 now on your Tuesday. I'm Bill Wixie. I'm Liz DeWicky. MJ's following our forecast. A beautiful start right now, MJ. Hi. We have clear skies across most of the region. Just a little bit of patchy fog in places. That'll burn off. 51 right now. Normal low is 50, so we're right around that. A little bit of wind from the east. Offshore flow keeping us clear. Gorgeous weather. Sunny and 70 today for Seattle and Tacoma. <laughs> Doesn't get much better than that. 66 for Everett, 69 Bremerton, and 65 in Bellingham. So as you step out the door, you want that jacket this morning and sunglasses this afternoon sunset right at 7 p.m. All righty, and boy, if we had problems, how are we looking right now? Yeah, you know, this has just been one of those mornings where it's been one issue after another, and these have been strange ones, like a two-car collision that turned into a car fire and now takes up the two right lanes of southbound I-5 just around the Michigan curve. This continues to be a pretty big distraction. If you're trying to get to the airport and you're leaving downtown Seattle, uh, or if you're, you know, you're with your, you know, about to climb, climb into a cab, tell your driver, uh, take 99 instead. South 5 is going to take you an extra long time getting out of town. Meanwhile, northbound I-5 moving in towards about the South Center Hill, just north of 516. That's been a collision that's given us grief. You find northbound I-5 stressing out of Tacoma. 512 delays you out of Puyallup, moving in towards almost the fairgrounds and then connecting onto 167. Both the Valley Freeway and I-5 with their tangles. 5 specifically heavier in towards 516 because of that earlier problem. 90 becoming a bigger mess across the water, whereas 520 saves you time. And South 5 and South 405, still a test of your patience near the Kings and Homish County line. Guys, back over to you. So this morning we are hearing from Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh for the first time since the accusations of sexual misconduct against him. So the judge and his wife Ashley spoke exclusively on Fox News Channel uh, with the story with Martha McCallum. I'm not going to let false accusations drive us out of, the, out of this process, and um, you know we're looking for a fair process where I can be heard and defend the my integrity, my lifelong record, my lifelong record of promoting dignity and equality for women, starting with the the women who knew me when I was 14 years old. I'm not going anywhere. So this morning, the White House says it would be open to testimony from a second woman accusing Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh of sexual misconduct. Officials say Deborah Ramirez could testify on Thursday, the same day Kavanaugh and his first accuser are scheduled to testify. Stay, of course, with Q13 News this morning all week, leading up to Brett Kavanaugh and his first uh, accuser's testimony Thursday. Got that live coverage, including analysis on what this could mean for his nomination. So a Republican state lawmaker says he will resign after new allegations of sexual misconduct, but not until after the November election. So Representative Matt Manweller from Ellensburg says it's important he is reelected before he resigns so that his seat can be filled with a, another Republican. So uh, Manweller rather, is accused of having a sexual relationship with a former high school student in Idaho in the 90s. He's denied the allegation. But he was fired from his position at Central Washington University last month over allegations of inappropriate conduct with women there. Last week, state Republicans called for him to step down from the legislature. Brandy is here. Uh, Manweller has clearly thought out what he believes will be best for his party. Our, this is know, a confusing situation. It is very confusing. So here's kind of the reality of it. His name can't be taken off the ballot. It, it's too late for that to happen. So regardless, his name is going to be on the ballot. And also, you're in a very reliably red district that is majority Republican. And so what he's saying is, as you said, 
I'll resign, but not until after I'm elected. And that way, Republicans get to pick my replacement. Because if he, you know, all he could do right now, the other option is sort of like cease his campaign, right? But he could still get the most amount of votes. And so it is a complicated situation. This is how Representative Mann Mueller has chosen to deal with it, despite calls from both sides that he resign right now. I want to read for you part of a statement he put out on his Facebook page before he, like, scrubbed the Internet of his social media presence overnight. He said, last week, Media stories broke about an alleged relationship I had 22 years ago. As the Kavanaugh hearings have shown, there is no limit on how far back in time one can go to dig up such allegations. He continued explaining his decision. If I am reelected, I plan to resign before the session begins or whatever the law requires. For the Republican Party, however, it is important that I am reelected because the law would require that my seat be filled with another Republican. Of course, uh, some including Democrats, uh, aren't too pleased with the way he's chosen to do this, think he ought to drop out right away. Uh, I want to read for you the state uh, Democratic Party chair's tweet over this. She said, Manweller knows he is wrong and should resign now and cease his campaign. Yet another example of male GOP politician prioritizing politics over women. Uh, so here's the reality. In the primary election, uh, Matt Manweller absolutely uh, annihilated his Democratic opponent, uh, opponent in this case. It was not even close uh, in the race. And as I had said, um, where he represents the 13th District, Ellensburg, the area around there, it is reliably Republican. So Manweller's argument has been, uh, if I drop out or cease my race, you know, the only option then is this Democrat who doesn't represent the values uh, of my district, which is majority Republican. So that seems to be the mindset that he has uh, with this decision. Going okay, but do you, do you see the results changing as a result of any of this? You know, um, like I said, he got like 60-something percent of the vote right. uh, in the primary. Sylvia Hammond is his Democratic uh, female opponent, maybe a little bit. Uh, certainly if people, I mean, as a voter, if I'm, if I'm going to fill out my ballot and I know I'm going to, fill in a circle for someone who already says he's going to resign before the next session. I'm sure there are some voters who are going to say, I'm not going to do that, or maybe some Republican voters who don't even vote in that race. But um, I can see uh, a lot of voters over there. In fact, I was just over in Ellensburg um, speaking to voters last week. I was over there on the campaign trail with uh, Dina Rossi, who's running for uh, Congress. Um, I can see a lot of them agreeing with Matt Manweller that they just want a Republican. So voting for him, him winning the election, him resigning resigning and then them appointing a different Republican to replace him. I actually see that as being the most plausible scenario, to be honest. All right. Well, we'll be following that. Randy, yeah. thank you. Uh, so the Seahawks making uh, some leadership changes, leadership changes, I should say, at the top. Chuck Arnold is now the new president of the Seattle Seahawks, replacing Peter McLaughlin, who the Seahawks say is leading the franchise by mutual agreement. Arnold is in his 25th season with the Hawks, and he will manage all team business operations. Meantime, we're hearing from head coach Pete Carroll about Earl Thomas's future as a Seahawk. After two interceptions in Sunday's win over the Cowboys, Thomas said he planned on taking care of his body by missing practices if anything ailed him, including a slight headache. Thomas missed two practices last week, and he said he wants to feel appreciated in the form of a long-term contract extension. Here's what Carroll said about the situation yesterday. We're working through it. There's there's concerns. He has concerns about his, the business side of things, and and uh, it's been very well noted. And uh, I understand. You know, I get it. And we're working we're working through stuff. Does the working through it include possibly talking about his contract or yeah, everything's possible. Everything's possible. We're you know we're we're open to whatever you know whatever we need to do to keep moving forward in a positive manner. I totally understand when guys are at the end of their contracts and they want to get another contract. And we will definitely be keeping an eye on that situation as the Hawks prep for week four in Arizona this Sunday. And by the way, you can catch that game on Q13 Fox. We have a pregame show starting at 1230. We'll take you right up to kickoff at 1, followed by a full hour of Seahawks game day right here on your official Seahawks station. All right, I'm Jane with that forecast right now. It's really pretty out. Gorgeous. It's just perfect. I, this is my favorite kind of weather. I'm not even in a good mood this week because of this gorgeous weather. I'm with you. It's and, the yeah. best. Are you yeah. going to take a walk? Well, you'll take the dogs out, Absolutely. Right? This yeah, is the dog's go. favorite weather, too. Yeah. Right? yeah. Is it a good uh, to kind of weather to jog in? Yeah. I, yeah. I, I mean, you can't, you can't go wrong. I know. So do it. Do it's something. It's perfect for everything. Because ah, you know the rains of winter will be upon us shortly. Look at the bits of fog as we look down from Capitol Hill across the city, which is glinting with some sunshine.
sunshine. 51 degrees in Seattle right now. We've got some chilly spots. Okay, Shelton at 36 with some fog and 39 in Olympia. Oh, Joint Base with some cord. Also reporting a little bit of fog and 38 right now. 42 in Bellingham, also kind of foggy there. But if you, if you got the fog, it'll burn off. We'll have gorgeous sunshine today, exactly like yesterday. But let's turn the temps up a little bit, all right? Yesterday, we hit 68 Seattle, which is normal for this time of the year. Today, 70. Seattle, Bury and Bellevue, Renton, 69 in Bremerton. Gorgeousness in King and Kitsap counties. South Sounders, fantastic. 70 for Tacoma and Lakewood, Puyallup. 71, Olympia and Lacey, 73 in Centralia. And I'm not really seeing the fog, Olympia and Centralia this morning. But there is some fog in the north end, 63 for the high in Bellingham today. Lovely. 66 in Arlington, starting out with some fog, but afternoon sunshine, 66 in Everett, 68 in Monroe. Coastal folks, pure sunshine today. You don't have the fog or cloud this morning either. And how about 70 for Aberdeen and Hoquiam? Lovely. And 75, Long Beach and Astoria. Over the Cascades, nothing but sun. That freezing level over 12,000 feet. Great day for a hike. 74 for Wenatchee and Ellensburg with sunny skies there. And the good news is three fires still burning on the eastern slopes of the Cascades, but they're almost completely contained. So that's great news. Mariners are home. Roof open tomorrow and Thursday. Beautiful sunshine. 71 tomorrow. 73 on Thursday and 75 on Friday. What a great work week. And then Saturday, yeah, some clouds roll in, but still lovely, mostly sunny and 71 for the Sounders and the Huskies, both playing at home. And then Sunday and Monday, we got a slight chance of a few showers with highs in the mid-60s. For your pet walk forecast today, oh yes, it's a wagon tail day. And this is Miss Piggy, a Persian kitten, looking at us, kind of judging us, I think, from Kimberly in Port Ludlow. And if you've got a great pet photo, pets in costumes for Halloween, go to our website, q13fox.com slash pick my pet. Here's Adam with our commute. Sure enough, this morning, again, we are keeping an eye on what's happening south five, getting out of Seattle, just past the Michigan curve, where this two-car collision slash car fire is being loaded onto the back of a flatbed pickup, uh, pickup truck at this point. I think they just do your best, boys. Put the cables on and just haul that. Th oh, there it goes. Look at that. That was exciting. I was just going to drag it out of there, make it a giant fiery spark mess all the way down I-5. Uh, it would be entertaining to watch at this point. You have really nothing to lose. Uh, meanwhile, delays do continue for us on southbound I-5 right around the West Seattle Bridge. Possibly another collision to give us grief. I've also seen stress on uh, southbound 405, getting into Canyon Park where there's a broken down vehicle, a semi, that's going to be closer to 195th in the Beardsley area. So we've got backups all around the sound. Northbound I-5 heavy from the Michigan curve, or the 16 curve, getting up towards the dome. Uh, 512 still slows out a few up, and then the Valley Freeway heavier in through Pacific. Auburn to Kent, northbound I-5 heavy in towards 516 from earlier problems. Rents and curves still giving us grief. 90 worse than 520 across the water. And South 5, uh, that seems to line up a little bit in through Shoreline. But I mean, no matter where we turn right now, we are looking at backups. Guys, back over to you. 741 right now and coming up the changes Walmart is making to help protect shoppers when there is a food recall. Plus, could Snapchat be the future of shopping? Teaming up with Amazon and we're showing you how this is working coming up next. We're listening to what you care about, the concerns you have about your community, the challenges you're facing. Q13 News at 10, all local, all night. Feeding these guys is tough enough as it is. I definitely can't afford new taxes on groceries. But look at what happened with the huge new beverage tax in Seattle. And other cities in Washington have recently looked to pass similar taxes. Once they reach into our grocery cart, where does it end? And that's why I'm supporting this initiative, before local governments can put new taxes on any of our groceries. Everyone should vote yes on 1634 to keep our groceries affordable. See, feel, climb. First out, last in. Look round corners. Look in crannies. Go down dark alleys. Lose yourself. Catch a lift. Push boundaries. Go walk about. Get set. Go after the goosebumps. Never stop discovering. It is hard to find your footing, so you need people that you're close to to help guide you. I think about how important it was for me to have the role models that I've had. Ugh, look at that. I wasn't able to get there alone. He essentially plucked me out of obscurity. He's the one who said, hey man, this is your life, this is what you need to do. Nobody can do it alone. The more help you can get along the way, the faster you can achieve your goals. I'm in it to fly. To help people achieve their dreams. To speak for those who cannot. Whatever you're in it for, we're in it together. When Kim Schreier says, I will lead the fight. 
to keep them out. What she isn't saying is the real people that are kept out are the ones most in need. Millionaire Kim Schreier's practice denied health care to poor kids on Medicaid while she got rich. Medicaid patients need us to open doors, not close them. We need to keep Kim Schreier out of Congress. NRCC is responsible for the content of this advertising. Side attractions, and then there's our world famous on road attraction. The 2019 GLC 4 Matic. At least the GLC 300 4 Matic for just $4.89 a month at your local Mercedes Benz dealer. Mercedes Benz, the best or nothing. Welcome back. 7.44 right now. So, President Donald Trump is speaking to the UN General Assembly this morning. Want to take a quick listen in here. Great strides and very historic change. Following my trip to Saudi Arabia last year, the Gulf countries opened a new center to target terrorist financing. They are enforcing new sanctions, working with us to identify and track terrorist networks, and taking more responsibility for fighting terrorism and extremism in their own region. The UAE, Saudi Arabia, and Qatar have pledged billions of dollars to aid the people of Syria and Yemen, and they are pursuing multiple avenues to ending Yemen's horrible, horrific civil war. Ultimately, it is up to the nations of the region to decide what kind of future they want for themselves. All right, so President Trump speaking now to the UN General for Assembly reason, also United talked States earlier about his work with North Korea, praising Kim Jong Un's bravery. We are listening North to this right now. We'll bring you the highlights later in the show. Also, if you're interested, we're streaming the entire speech live on our website at q13fox.com. You can find it there. Hey, we do have a recall to tell you about this morning here. Mauna Loa macadamia nut products are being recalled over possible E. coli contamination. The Hawaii Department of Health saying the company's facility was found to have E. coli in the well water and distribution system. The affected products, take a look, including the roasted uh, and salted honey roasted Maui on onion garlic and chocolate macadamia nuts, as well as their shortbread cookies also. The products were made between September 6th and the 21st. So far, no illnesses have been reported, but if you have that affected product, you're urged to throw it away or return it for a refund. Hey, Walmart is working to tackle future outbreaks with technology. In fact, it just announced a plan to require technology called blockchain. So basically, you think of it like a document. A master copy is saved online, and then every time someone changes the document, it automatically shows who made that change and what the update was. In terms of the romaine lettuce contamination earlier this year, the Wall Street Journal says a blockchain system could have shown exactly where each head of lettuce came from and made it a lot easier to tell whether that lettuce was part of the contaminated crops or not. Theoretically, having this kind of technology should have uh, should save stores rather some money as well, because instead of throwing out all the romaine lettuce like they did last year, stores could just pull out the specific packages that were at risk. Hey, Amazon is teaming up with Snapchat. I don't know if we're ready for this. They're working on a program that lets you snap a picture of something in the real world and then you can find it immediately on Amazon and then you buy it. So here's a graphic kind of what this would look like on Snapchat. You have to use your Snapchat camera. You point it at something, uh, maybe at a barcode or something you see in real life that you want to buy, and then it gets that process started. Snapchat says, if Amazon cannot find the exact thing you're looking for, it will offer something similar. Hmm. Okay, so they're going to make it even easier for us to spend our money. All right, this comes one week, though, after Instagram got into the shopping game, giving brands the option of putting product information right in the Stories section. Instagram also put a shopping option under the Explore tab, where you can see shopping-related posts from brands that you like. All right, 748 right now, checking in with MJ here. The weather's free. Yeah, <laughs> no charge. <laughs> 
We got clear skies, so a little bit of fog on the edges of Tacoma, mostly clear skies here at Payne Field. Olympia, you see that little bit of fog just kind of hovering on the ground, kind of cool looking. Hazy sun in the U District right now, clearing out through the Strait of Juan de Fuca and Bellingham, where we've had some fog this morning. Sunshine throughout the day today, Seattle 51 right now, 65 by lunchtime and 70 for the high. Overnight tonight, clear skies. And then tomorrow and Thursday, keeping the sun around and warming it up. 71 tomorrow, 73 on Thursday, 75 on Friday, and then... Saturday, some clouds roll in low 70s for the Sounders and the Huskies. And then Sunday and Monday, just a chance of a few showers. Not real wet, but cooling us down to the mid 60s. All in all, a fantastic forecast. You're welcome. Here's Adam with our commute. Okay, so watching what's happening for drivers trying to make their way out of Seattle on southbound I-5. The challenges continue getting in around the Michigan curve where this two-car collision slash car fire slash smoldering pile continues to be a concern. Uh, the right lane is impacted by this, so getting past this is already difficult to begin with. Now add insult to injury on that, and that would be adding a collision south five near the West Seattle Bridge. So you have a one-two punch, right, trying to get out of town. Really do advise drivers using 99 if you're trying to get to the airport, like you got that flight to catch and you didn't want to be late. Now, yeah, 99 seems to work a little bit faster at this point. Uh, you'll also notice northbound I-5 heavier in through Tacoma from 16 getting up towards the dome. Uh, watching the val uh, 512 in the Valley Freeway getting out of Puyallup and heading north. Typical backups continue here. 405 Renton Curve still slugging it out through Kennedale and Newcastle. We've seen I-90 busier across the water, especially then once you round uh, off of 90 out to southbound I-5. Now you're really asking for it. Uh, you'll find 520 treating you just a shade better. South 5, South 405 still stumbling as drivers reach into the Kings and Homish County line. 405 heavier in towards Bothell and Canyon Park from earlier problems as well. Guys, back over to you. 750 right now, there's new hope for people dealing with injuries that would usually leave you in a wheelchair. We are showing you an incredible breakthrough coming up. Plus at 8 o'clock, telling you the next steps to bring an NHL team to Seattle after the City Council approved those renovations at Key Arena. There we go. Turn right here. Here? Yeah. During the Jeep oh Adventure my. Days event, Discover deals as legendary as Jeep SUV's 4x4 capability. Because it's more than just a test drive, it's your first adventure. Hurry into the Jeep Adventure Days event. What they burn, we breathe. Polluters have poisoned our air and water, creating a mess and harming our health. Initiative 1631 holds them accountable, charging a fee for this, then reinvesting it in this. The big oil companies don't support it, but doctors in the American Lung Association do. Because 1631 means cleaner air and water, thousands of clean energy jobs, and a better future for them. Vote yes on 1631. Paid for by Clean Air, Clean Energy, Washington. David, did you remember to get me an anniversary present? Anniversary? Of course. It's Mattress Depot USA's anniversary sale. Low prices every day. Mattress Depot USA. Progress is confidence in chaos. Innovative safety and driver assistance technologies like Audi Presense. Found in the Audi Q5. Get an exceptional offer at your local Audi dealer. the largest selection of authentic jerseys, sweatshirts, hats, and more at one of four Puget Sound Pro Shop locations. Or shop online anytime at Seahawks.com. He seemed too good to be true, so I looked him up. Turns out, Dino Rossi not only voted against struggling families, but he tried to profit from their misery, too. As a real estate investor, Rossi taught a seminar on how to profit when people lost their homes during the four crisis and Rossi kept working with a shady investor even as he was indicted for fraud take a look for yourself Dino Rossi is not for us DCCC is responsible for the content of this ad make every day an adventure with exciting deals on Jeep vehicles right now during the Jeep Adventure Days event well qualified lessees of competitor vehicles get a low mileage lease on the 2018 Jeep Grand Cherokee for $2.29 a month hurry to your Jeep dealer
Welcome back. It is 7.53 right now on a beautiful Tuesday morning. Look at that. Looks like a city in the clouds there. Hey, we've got some big news this morning for Boeing. It beat Lockheed Martin for a $2.4 billion deal to build helicopters for the Air Force. Uh, we want to show you here. This is the Boeing MH-139. It's going to replace Huey helicopters. The Wall Street Journal reports that the deal is actually split into two parts. The first phase, worth almost $400 million, is to build four of these helicopters to help protect nuclear missile bases. And then eventually, the Air Force is planning to buy 84 of the MH-139s. All the road work on I-90 is really starting to pay off. Crews just marked the halfway point of a 15-mile improvement project on I-90 eastbound. The seven-mile stretch extends from Hayek to Stampede Pass. Two of three new eastbound lanes from Hayek to Stampede Pass are now open. The third lane is scheduled to open in November. The overall project includes new bridges, including two avalanche brides, as well as a wildlife overcrossing. When we completed our environmental impact statement, uh, back in 2008, we documented about 1,300 uh, wildlife uh, incidents uh, over a 10-year period. So we know the wildlife's here. We know they're trying to cross the, the roadway. And so for us, it's a safety issue, and this will help improve that. All right, so work to complete the remaining half of the 15-mile corridor all the way to Easton will start in 2021. It should be finished in 2029. Groundbreaking new technology could help people who have been paralyzed in accidents literally get back on their feet. Talking about a tiny implant on the same lines as a pacemaker that goes in the spine and sends electric signals, telling your legs when and how to move. Directly, the spinal cord itself, and we believe, that that was very important to be able to regain the volitional control or voluntary control. So the Washington Post reports nearly two dozen people, some of them who have been paralyzed for years, are able to walk again. Some can only manage a few steps at a time. Others can walk the length of a football field. To be able to move uh, my legs and to walk, even to stand, it means a lot um, that there's hope for not only me, but other people. So this is still in the very early stages right now. Doctors do not know why it works better for some people and not for others. There's still a lot of fine tuning as well. But researchers say it's a hopeful sign after decades of work. Ahead this morning, hear how leaders in Burien plan to keep the community safe after a string of recent shootings. And we are also breaking down the new budget Seattle's mayor has proposed and the main things she is hoping to 